Okay, hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the history of computer performance. I'm Sim Hye Lee and we want to start talking about the CPU and performance. Let's say that. You are going to buy a new computer. You would play games or research programs to some finals or some simulate something with your computer. And I'll give you a question. What is the most important step of the computer? What do you check first? You would think about price, graphics, size, but the most important factor must be the speed. Definitely, the faster computer is the better computer. So what does the, the best computer mean? This computer mean? How did computers get better? To answer those questions, let's move to CPU. A computer is like a very huge electronic circuit. Since the computer has been booted, what the computer really does is only operation with electronic signal. CPU, a central processing unit, is an electronic circuitry in the computer. These are the pictures of old and recent CPUs. CPU is like a brain of the computer. Basically, the CPU executes program with arithmetic logical control and input-output operations. That is, the actual functions of all the CPU are same, but the difference is in the speed. My next point is performance. The performance directly affects the speed of the computer, and the CPU consists of a lot of transistors. The transistors in the CPU operate orders, and the frequency of operations of the CPU is called clock. For example, the 3 GHz clock means the transistors, of, the transistors of the CPU operate 3 billion times per a second. The clock is like the heartbeat of the CPU. Increasing clock frequency makes more frequent operations, so it means the CPU gets higher performance. Now I'm going to explain the more slow. This is the error versus performance graph. We have to focus on the red line, which the y-axis in log scale, which means the performance is multiplied as the time goes. According to the Moore's law, the performance had doubled each two years until 2004. So what's going on there? From here, Hyun Song will continue and talk about the next step. Okay, from here I will explain what happened next. Let's see the graph first. The graph shows the performance increase by time. The x-axis means year from late 1970 to early 2000 and y-axis represents performance of CPU. And the graph is drawn in log scale which means it grows exponentially very fast. When you see the middle of the graph, from 19, uh, 1986 to 2002, you can find that the increasing rate was almost constant. That is, we could get higher performance by increasing clock frequency before 2002. But new, pri new problem appeared, something went wrong. It shows that the performance increasing rate was 52 per year. Uh, by 2002, but then it decreased to about 20%. We need to find the reason for slowing rate, why it became slower. The reason is the phenomenon power war. As we explained before, performance is related to clocks in CPU, and the heat is related to clocks because the clock generates heat. Then here is the problem. The powerful computer means powerful performance. Powerful performance means powerful CPU. To be powerful CPU, its heartbeat gets faster. For heartbeat get to get faster, we need to increase uh, clock frequency. And when we increase the clock frequency, the more heat occurs. Then the power blocks us, so we cannot increase clock frequency infinitely. Now, we are in dilemmas. We cannot increase clock frequency, so we cannot increase performance. But we still want higher performance. 
and we will find the way we always have. To solve the problem, we should reduce the heat per clock. The known fact is that heat is related to transistor size, so we reduce the size of transistors from 90 nanometers to 60, 45, 3, uh, 32, and it goes on. So heat, so the heat decreases. We can add more transistors, but the more transistor means the more performance. At some degree, it is right, but we introduce some new solution. The solution is multiple CPU. When you see the CPU chip, there is the part called core. Core is like a brain of CPU. The more core we have, the more tasks we can do at the same time. So multiple means multitasking. And uh, we make single core to dual core dual core to quad core and octa core, which means two cores, four cores, and eight cores. While the heat per clock is resisted, we add more transistors, multi-core, they generate same heat with higher performance. So it seems that we solve the problem, but human being is greedy. What if there is another way to increase performance? It seems that we've done uh, to develop CPU, so another kind of CPU is needed. So from here, my friend Dehyun explains. <coughs> uh, there are some limitations in CPU. Uh, that is, CPU is specialized for sequentially tasks. So uh, the CPUs can do tasks simultaneously. If you can do do tasks simultaneously, then like this, we can reduce time and more performance. So we use GPU. The GPU is graphic processing unit and was developed for first developed for games. Uh, games need great power of performance because they need a lot of they need to render a lot of vertexes or textures or a lot of things in simultaneously. So they are optimized for power operations but not useful for sequential tasks. Uh, to use GPU, uh, to use GPU, the knowledge of GPU architecture is very is very necessary because if you don't know the G how GPU is works, then the performance you can have is very limited. The difference between CPU and GPU is CPU has a few big cores and GPU has a lot of or hundreds to thousands of core, thousands of small cores. Uh, in general purpose, we use both of them and uh, a lot of a lot of applications in code we use we can do about 95% of code is used by CPU and only 5% of code is used by GPU, but the 5% of code is, takes 95% of time. So by using GPU, uh, we can reduce a lot of time and for rest of CPU, sequentially codes, we use CPU so we can have the both good things.